our students chose to come to the Career Center, that was a pretty big commitment on, on their part. And so we're committed to giving every student the opportunity to earn their credential. Uh, I would say that probably, um, I don't have all of my notes with me, but probably 65 to 75 percent of our students in their programs um, already had the opportunity to earn their credential. Um, you know, as I said, our programs are different, whether it's healthcare, cosmetology, um, welding, for example, those students uh, practice uh, the material and practice the hand, hands-on welds. Because as you know, career tech education is hands-on by nature, where students have to demonstrate their uh, practical skills at a mastery level. And so all of our welding students had earned a 12-point industry-recognized credential uh, that's recognized by the Ohio Department of Education uh, as a pathway to graduation. The same with landscaping and environmental design um, and precision machining. There are other programs where instead of earning just one credential, they may have to earn three credentials that are that are valued by the State Department of Education at four points apiece to get up to the 12 points that, that allows them to use that as a pathway for graduation. That might be interactive multimedia and it may be um, information technology. So those students have all already had the opportunity to sit for those tests and pass them, but they're very challenging because they're real world. So some students may have four points or eight points, and we're gonna bring those students in um, under the guidelines of the, the CDC and our local uh, health district in June because uh, test integrity dictates that they can't take those tests at home. Um, Cosmetology, for example, those students uh, have very strict hour requirements that they have to complete uh, hands-on work and theory work in the lab with a certified cosmo or a licensed cosmetologist. And those students, uh, fortunately, ODE has worked with all of the um, institutions that uh, grant credentials and licenses, and those institutions have modified for this year due to the pandemic um, some requirements so that students, as long as they're documenting their hours online with their assignment, with their instructor, they're able to count those hours. But ultimately, the cosmetology students will still have to go to Columbus to the state board and sit for the theory and practical test, uh, you know, as the, as the guidelines in the pandemic um, dictate. So we have a plan for everyone. Um, like I said, a, a few programs, we will uh, invite students to come back in June uh, following the, uh, the state guidelines, and uh, we're going to give everybody the opportunity. We're going to bring our teachers back for those programs that need it. Uh, but in healthcare, uh, those students all earned their, or had the opportunity to earn the STNA credential, which is 12 points their junior year, and that gets them to graduation. We also offer phlebotomy, so there will be some students that are interested that will come back in June and have to demonstrate that you know they can they can stick an arm with a needle and and extract blood and, and get that credential as well. I can tell you that our students that already had jobs in healthcare uh, are able to work additional hours. Our students are sending us pictures um, uh, donned in their PPE gear, and it's it's really great to connect with them and see them and share it on our Facebook that they're on the front lines. Uh, we have a couple of students working in hospice care, and they've shared stories with us that, you know, they've been there when when folks have taken their last breath because their families, unfortunately, are, not, are unable to be there with them. So these students are continuing, you know, real world work that is preparing them in environments like they would never have anticipated. As far as manufacturing, uh, we have students that have, that have been working, you know, 20, 30 hours a week before the pandemic, uh, and they're working even more now, but other uh, industries in manufacturing due to uh, social distancing, they, they've laid some students off. Those are the two that we're hearing the most about, healthcare and manufacturing. Um, obviously, like I said, with cosmetology, uh, they have to take their state board test, and with barbershops and salons not being able to be open right now, that's kind of at a standstill. So my hope is, um, you know, kid, kids are resilient. They have a lot of grit. Uh, for the for the most part, and my hope that they're going to look at this situation as a learning experience. Um, you know, I, I tell my my two sons, I have a 19 year old and a 17 year old, that 
the, you need to learn from every experience that you endure. And I hope that students learn to not take, you know, so many things for granted of just being able to socialize with their friends. And I'm hoping on the other end of this, we're going to pick up where we left off. And I can assure you, we're going to do our part to make sure everybody has the opportunity to earn that credential. Um, you know, as long as the student's willing to come in and participate, we'll make sure that it's a safe environment. For over a century, Farmers National Bank has stood strong. Through booms and busts, peaks and valleys, we've learned to know the seasons and how to grow in each of them. During challenging times, everyone is reminded of the value of solid relationships in both life and business. Farmers, stand strong.